Hello friends, let us study about the vestibulo-ocular reflex. Now let us try to draw the vestibulo-ocular reflex pathway first. If this is my right side, this is my left side. So if I am rotating on to the right side, what will happen to the cristae which is present in the ampulla of the semicircular canal? So what is this cristae? Cristae is actually made up of hair cells which are present here. So, when there is a head movement onto the right side, at the initial uh, time of the head movement, what will happen? There is a fluid which is present in these labyrinthine or you can say semicircular canal, right? So, if I think of this as the ampulla, if this is the bony case which is covering there, in between the bony case and the labyrinthine, membranous labyrinthine is present the fluid what we call this fluid as the perilymph. Then inside these duct, this semicircular duct, what is present is my endolymph. We are rotating our head towards the right side. What is happening? Whole of the apparatus is also moving towards the right side. But this fluid, which is at the state of inertia of rest, it takes time to follow the path of rotation. So, instead of having a rotation onto the right direction, there will be movement of the fluid towards the left side, right? So, there is a leftward movement of the endolymph. When there is leftward movement, what is happening to the uh, stereocilias which are present here? If this is my kinocelium and this is my stereocilia which is connecting to the kinocelium, there is movement of the stereocilia towards the kinocelium. Near to the stereocilia are present my potassium ion channels. Whenever there is a movement of stereocilia towards the kinocelium, these channels are opened. When these channels are opened, potassium gets in from the endolymph and there is depolarization. The depolarization in the afferent nerve which is supplying these Christine. So, we have seen that in the ampulla of the semicircular canal, there are sensitive hair cells and above these hair cells, there is a jelly-like substance what we call as cupula and whenever the head is moving towards the right side, because of the inertia, the movement of the fluid that is the endolymph which is present inside this duct, it is in the opposite direction that is in the left side. Because of this fluid movement towards the left side, what is happening? There is movement of the hair cells that is the stereocilia towards the kinocelium. The vestibular nerves which are supplying these hair cells, the impulses are going to travel through these nerves, these afferent fibers, they are going to through, go through the ganglion and from the ganglion, they are going to go to where? They are going to go to the vestibular nucleus. So, vestibular nucleus as we know, it is a collection of four nuclei. One is called as the superior nucleus, then is the medial nucleus. So, I can take this as superior nucleus, this as the medial nucleus, this as the lateral nucleus, this as my inferior nucleus. So, what is these fibers going to do? My vestibular fibers, the one which are responsible for vestibulo-ocular reflex, they are going to go to the medial side. Now, from here, these are going to go, I am just taking it if this is my midbrain and let me draw the eyeballs here later. Here is the nucleus for the sixth cranial nerve, that is the abducens nerve. Here is the nucleus for the third cranial nerve, right, the oculomotor nerve. Now, these fibers, the second order neurons from the medial vestibular nucleus, they are going to cross over and go to the sixth cranial nerve nuclei. Now, before this, let me draw an eyeball here and show you the muscles over there. If this is the left side, this is my right side. If this is the eyeball, I have a muscle here. What is this muscle? This is my lateral rectus. This is my medial rectus of my left eye. Similarly, for the right eye, I'll have the medial rectus here. 
the lateral rectus over here. Right? So, this is the medial rectus. This is the lateral rectus. Fine. So, these are the muscles, extraocular muscles. Let me draw the pathway now. So, to start with, where did I start? We started from the receptors. The receptors were present in the semicircular canals. So, when we are thinking of the head rotation, it is the semicircular canal which is going to get stimulated. So, receptors which are present in the semicircular canals are called as cresti. And cresti is having the hair cells who are going to respond to the movement of the endolymph. Now, from there, the information is being carried by the afferent fibers that is my vestibulocochlear nerve, the eighth cranial nerve and it goes to the vestibular nucleus. From the vestibular nucleus, the fibers they go, they ascend up and they give the next order neuron in the sixth cranial nerve. Fibers from the sixth cranial nerve, please uh, give a lot of attention here. What is that? From here, the fibers from the sixth cranial nerve They'll go and directly stimulate the lateral rectus muscle. Why are the interneurons? It is going to the, go to the third cranial nerve. What is this uh, connection from the sixth cranial nerve to the third cranial nerve called as? It is called as medial longitudinal fasciculus. From here, we have the next order neuron which goes and supplies to the middle rectus muscle. So, let's see first the stimulatory pathway. How is it going? All right. This is from which side of the semicircular canal? From the right side of the semicircular canal. Other than superior oblique muscle, you know, being supplied by the fourth cranial nerve and the lateral rectus supplied by the sixth cranial nerve, rest all other ocular muscles. That is, four other ocular muscles are going to be supplied by the third cranial nerve. Now, here you have to see that the sixth cranial nerve is directly going to supply to the lateral rectus muscle. There will be a lateral movement of my left eye and there will be medial movement of my right eye. Clear? Now, when we are rotating our head onto the right side, we know not only have the semicircular canals of the right side being activated or right side responding, we also have the semicircular canal of the left side. We have the bony labyrinthine, then we have the membranous labyrinthine, right? Here is the perilymph present and inside is my endolymph present. So, we have the cristae present here and there is the cupula there. We have the afferent nerve fibers from here. Now, let us see the situation. This is my left side. When I am here, See, if I look at the cristae, the movement of the cristae, it is something like this. If this is the kinocelium, it is towards the kinocelium. So, movement is in this direction. How about the left side? You are moving your head on to the right side. What about the movement over here? It will be like this. So, here it is away from the kinocelium. So, if this is the kinocelium, the movement is away from the kinocelium. When your head is rotating towards the right side, the right side of the cupula, you'll have the endolymph moving on to the left side. How about the left side? Here, the fluid movement is not towards the left side, means not towards the ampulla, but away from the ampulla. So, here we can say the movement is ampulopetal. The movement of the hair cell is towards the ampulla. Here, it is away from the kinocelium. We may also call that ampulofugal means away from the ampulla. Here, if I think this as the kinocelium and this as the seriocelia, now the, here in the left semicircular canal, the movement of the stereocelia is away from the kinocelia. There is hyperpolarization or you can say uh, there, there is inhibition, right? Now, let us take the inhibitory pathway. Now, from here, we have again same way afferent nerves, fibers, they are going through the vestibulo cochlear nerve, the vestibulo nerve, and they all are going to go to the medial side. From the medial side, we'll have the inhibitory fibers going to go to the sixth cranial nerve on the opposite side. From here, these fibers are going to go to the 
lateral rectus. All right. Then what is happening? Why are the medial longitudinal fasciculus from here? The fibers go here and from here. So this is the inhibitory pathway from here. Right. So let us now understand what is it. When we are doing the head rotation movement to the right side, we have the depolarizing current at the ampulla of right semicircular canal and we have hyperpolarizing current in the ampulla or the cristae of the left semicircular canal. These afferent fibers from the right side or the left side, they actually go and terminate in the medial vestibular nucleus. From there, the fibers ascend up and they go to the sixth cranial nerve. The sixth cranial nerve is supplying to my lateral rectus, right? And the medial rectus is being supplied by my third cranial nerve. And the fibers from the medial rectus, where are they coming from? From the sixth cranial nerve via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Okay, we call this as the right side, this as the left side. Left side, medial longitudinal fasciculus. These fibers, they are going to go and supply to the medial rectus. Now, what is my normal response of uh, vestibular ocular reflexes? When my head is moving on to the right side, my eye movement, what should be my eye movement? It should be conjugate eye movement onto the opposite side. Since here of the medial rectus of the right eye, so right eye is going to get you know medially rotated it, it's going to get to the medial side here the medial rectus of the left eye is inhibited but lateral rectus is stimulated if you're rotating your head in this direction this was your neutral position you were fixing your gaze here you fix the gaze when you are moving in this direction the eyes goes here when you are moving your head in this direction the eyes moved here this is the normal response this is this response you are getting because of Vestibulo ocular reflex. Mm -hmm.